like all that stuff. Welcome everybody. I'm gonna say this again. So, but we are recording this tonight. So you feel free to turn your cameras off if you don't want to have your face on the recording. Um, I'll I'll eventually go to just a speaker view. So uh, it's just the speaker being recorded. Um, and then just a reminder, if you're not to just be to mute yourself and um, we we just so we don't have any background noise. Uh, and questions in the chat. So uh, we're going to give it a couple minutes, I think, for people to join since it's just six o'clock. So we'll get started in like two or three minutes. Um, but if you want to just while you're we're waiting in the chats, just share where you're located. I am in sunny Phoenix, Arizona right now. Uh, my name is Lindsay, by the way. I don't know if I said that. I'm from Women Who Explore and Hallie is going to be joining Hi. us yep. as our presenter tonight. So. <laughs> Uh, okay. Cool. Fun. Oh, oh my Oregon ladies. I used to live in Eugene and Portland. I love Oregon. So pretty. Fun BC, California, Regina. Oh, we have somebody in Bozeman. Yeah. Nice. Kim Loops. Saskatoon. I'm learning my how to pronounce Canadian things better. I'm, <laughs> I was really bad for a while. Um, I'm still bad at it. A welcome to everybody who is joining us. Um, oh, Minnesota is my home. Uh, we're just going to give it a couple minutes for everybody to uh, get logged on and then we'll get started. Um, and I'll repeat this again, but we are recording. So feel free to keep your cameras on or turn them off. Uh, we'll go to speaker view when the presentation starts. And then uh, if you have questions, you can drop them in the chat. And right now we're just kind of sharing where we're from in the chat. So if you want to share, we would love to see where everybody's tuning in from. Great Falls, nice. All right. So does anybody have any big backcountry adventures planned for the summer? I'd be curious about that too, if you want to share. Chat below. I'm hiking. I'm going to be doing a week hike on the PCT with my friend. We're doing a section of it in Oregon. So that's my big adventure. so can you hear me yep that's my that's my dog in the background <laughs> so, my, sorry here she comes this is coral hi coral hi. she really loves attention and if you don't give it to her she like howls at you like a little hound dog she's really sweet okay i can go get charlotte Okay, cool. Well, we have one more person joining and then I think we'll get started here. And um, I'm going to go speaker. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, welcome everybody uh, to our Backcountry Safety 101 course tonight. Uh, my name is Lindsay. I'm from Women Who Explore and Hallie from Beyond the Backcountry LLC is going to be teaching our course tonight. Um, She'll tell you a little bit about herself in just a second. Uh, just a quick reminder, we are recording tonight. So um, if you don't wanna share your video, you don't have to, you can turn it off in the bottom corner of the screen. Um, and any questions you have, uh, just drop those in the chat and we'll share them kind of as we go. And we'll have a, also a and a option at the end. Um, outside of that, uh, we just have to keep muted and if you just joined us, we'd love to see where you're joining from. So you can share that in the chat as well. And this will be recorded, like I said, and a link will be sent out to everybody after class um, in a day or two. So, um, okay, well, I'm gonna let Hallie take, take it over. I'm gonna go mute here. Okay, hi everyone. Can everyone hear me okay? If so, I'm in the chat. You can just type, yes, I can. Uh, we were having issues 
earlier, but hopefully you can. Um, I'd like to thank Women Who Explore and Lindsay personally for having me for this. This is awesome. I love teaching these things. Um, I'm in my little tent as usual. I've got my uh, co-host here who is sleeping. I don't know if I can get you to look down here. She's sleeping on the floor. That's Ranger. Um, but anyways, a little bit about myself. Um, I'm born and raised in Montana and I moved away for a little bit and um, like probably a lot of you on here, I had no clue about anything with hiking. So I started out just kind of doing my own thing, going solo a lot and I still do go solo a lot, but um, the main thing I wanted to learn was how to go into the backcountry properly and I took a bunch of courses over the course of the years and just did a bunch of YouTubing to be honest with you and talking to people. Um, sometimes I'd meet people on the trail and they would like, you know, give me some pointers and stuff like that. And then um, a few years ago, I decided I wanted to, everything that I learned, I wanted to start teaching. And so I did Beyond the Backcountry LLC probably a year ago now. I used to be called the Nomadic Ice Axe, which a lot of people didn't really like that name. So. <laughs> So I changed it to be on the back country and now I teach wilderness first aid um, and then I teach avalanche courses and I teach this one which is a backcountry prep class and I used to have it as a wilderness survival class but a lot of people heard the word like survival and they didn't really like that so I was like okay I got to change that um, and if any of you guys have any questions just put them in the chat in there and I'll try to like reach out to you guys I don't do powerpoints or anything like that um, I really don't care for them. That's not the way I learn. Um, I learn by just kind of showing. Um, so I hope that is how you guys learn as well and you weren't looking for a PowerPoint. But um, anyways, yeah, just put any questions you have down there and I'm gonna start in really quick because we only have an hour and I like to ramble. So I actually made myself a list this time so I don't get off track. Um, and then Lindsay can also you know, direct me back on or anyone else can if I like get off track, please. So the first thing I like to talk about is when we do go out in the backcountry, um, I've been one of those people that I don't know if anyone else, and you can also put this in chat, has got lost on the trail, but I have a couple times. Um, and to be honest with you, they're in places I actually did not think I'd ever get lost. And one of them is in my own backyard here. Um, I don't know if Jen Daft is on here or not, but she actually hikes the Mod S Trail and I have plenty of times. And this is from personal experience. I didn't have anything with me the day I got lost. It was supposed to be a day trip. I went out and it was supposed to be a 13 mile point A to point B kind of thing right over this ridge we have. And it was during the winter time, one of the coldest days. And I thought, oh, you know what? I'm just gonna know where I'm going. It's 13 miles. It's like right in my backyard. So I didn't bring anything. And the next thing I know, I got kind of caught like a bit midway. And I knew I should have turned around at that point and I didn't. Um, what I did was think, oh, well, it's getting dark, but I think I can just keep going over the ridge. I think it's just right there. I've done this in the summer, so it has to be in the same area and it wasn't. And so what happened, and this is when we'll talk about this, the mental part started to take over. And I will admit this happened to me and it's happened twice and it's really hard to control is I started to, when it got dusk, I started to know, okay, I need to make a decision. And I don't know why I thought I could keep going. I should have just turned around. And I got off track and it was in snowshoes and I actually circled back around and I looked at a pair of snowshoe tracks and I thought they were someone else's, but they were mine. And my brain just wasn't calculating at the point that these are tracks and you're lost at this point. And so I kept going, it got darker and darker and it got colder and colder. My phone started, my battery was dead and I didn't really have a way to contact else. I didn't have a DeLorme at that point. I didn't have a like spot device. Um, the only thing I had was my cell phone, which the battery was dying and I was like starting to mentally freak out. And I contacted someone and hurried up and sent them a text message. And I didn't know how to use a map or, or do any waypoints. I had like nothing. And so I didn't know what to do. I told them, I said, I think I'm lost. They were supposed to pick me up on the other side, like early in the day. And I was like, I think I'm lost. I don't know where I'm at. And they're like, how is that even possible? You're in your backyard. And I'm like, I am, I think I'm lost. And it got dark really quick and it got cold really quick. And at one point 
I started really freaking out and I freaked out really, really bad. Um, I started crying. I started weighing my options. I, at one point I had no food with me. I had like really no snacks, nothing. Um, I was out of water. I had like barely minimum battery on my headlamp. This is like the worst case scenario you guys could ever probably get in. I had it. And it was all basically just, I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. And I actually stopped at one point and I kind of dug myself a little hole in the snow and I curled up into a ball um, and just sat there and just sat for probably a good five, 10 minutes and just like let it all out. And I was like, okay, I need to control myself here. I am literally almost, I can see the like lights of the city and I'm gonna be okay. And my friend, he like came in the other direction with a big spotlight. And he was like, just, you know, when you see it, texting me, follow that light. And I was looking and looking and finally I saw it flashing in the distance. I was like, oh my God, it was the best thing I could have ever had happen. And so um, he met me and then I met him and we hiked out and I got out about midnight when I was supposed to actually be out about 6 p.m. And so I learned my lesson on that one, you would think, um, but it's happened a couple other times during that. I've got Mount Rainier, I got lost with a friend and that was just turned around. So it can happen really quick. And that's why I'm here tonight to teach. Um, hopefully give you guys a couple pointers for when you do go out there to just what to prepare in your pack for the day, expecting, oh crap, I have to stay the night now. And hopefully it's just something, you know, like you're running late and it's not gonna be where you get lost, but it's really, really easy to get lost in your backyard, um, like I said. And so like make a plan. That's the first thing I wanna go over tonight is make a plan before you get out. You know, like it can be just in your backyard and you're like, I'm only gonna go five miles, but the things that you carry in your pack are gonna matter, especially when you're with people. I always carry two of everything. Every time I go out when I'm with someone and regardless if I'm with someone, if I'm by myself, I still usually carry two of everything because I might lose something, something might malfunction. The only thing I don't carry two of just because it's expensive is like the Delorme. I mean, that's kind of ridiculous to carry that because you do hopefully have your phone as well. If something does really happen, you can shut your phone off and use your Delorme and kind of like, you know, mix that battery power up, but um, make a plan and communicate that plan with someone that you actually rely on. There's a lot of us, you know, I have a lot of friends and stuff um, in the past where I'm like, oh, I could totally rely on that person. And then I couldn't, you know, so just think in the back of your head, it may sound really crass, but just talk to yourself and go, could I rely on that person if something happened to me? You know, is that person the person that is on their phone a lot? You know, do they know the backcountry really well? Do they know where I will be? Because you might tell someone, like, I might say, oh, I'm going to go up into Fleecer, which is just right out here. And someone might go, oh, yeah, I know where that's at. And they really don't. And then they have no clue how to tell search and rescue and stuff like that. So just kind of like keep that in mind to let people know that you rely on and that you can like, you know, call if something is wrong or search and rescue can call them and that they will know what to do and where to find you. Um, so kind of just, you know, think about those things. And once you like communicate that to someone, also, if you change your plans, you guys probably know this hopefully, but just if you change plans, always tell someone all the time. And um, one thing that I don't like to do is some people say, we'll leave a note you know, on your car, leave it at your house, leave it on your fridge, leave it somewhere there, but don't ever leave it, I'd say on the car or anything like that, because that's just opening up a can of worms if someone comes by and they know, you know, that possibly it's just, it's, I don't really care for that too much. Um, so just leave it at your house somewhere that is like right on the counter, right on the fridge, somewhere that someone, as soon as they get in your house, if you are missing, they are going to find that. Um, and another thing is like how to plan for the worst case scenario is I like to pre-plan before I go out and that's with just myself solo and that's with anyone else. So not only communicating, but I'm also communicating with the people I'm going with. So if I'm gonna go out for the day, I'm thinking first off, okay, you know, we check the weather, we see what it's gonna be like, we have a game plan. So if something does go wrong, we can start just going A, B, C, D, right down that list and we know what we have to do. And that's like you know, when you are with someone, kind of like think of them as your partner. They're gonna like save your life possibly, or they're gonna get you out of a situation or help you with that situation and make things better. 
So, you know, if like you're with someone and that person that you're like your other friend or whatever is like, you know what, I don't really like leading or I don't really know how to read maps or find those things out before you go out into the woods with them and ask them, you know, hey, maybe do you want to take a class and take it together so you can both learn. So if something does go wrong, you guys can like back each other up. Um, those are things that you want to do. And so like when I say put people in charge, and this is where we go into like, you know, using those items that you can use for signaling, fire and shelter is give everyone something to do. And so if you're going out solo by yourself, well, then that's kind of all you and it's going to like lay on you, which, you know, that's just how it is. And you're going to have to build that fire. You have to make that signal and you're going to have to do that shelter. But if you're with someone or two or three people and start talking about it, being like, okay, if something does happen back there, what should we do? You know, what would you like to do? And ask them, be like, do you like building fires? And do you want to be that fire person that builds the fire and keep it going? And then like ask the other friend of yours being like, well, do you want to make the shelter? And then I can start making the signal. Start making a plan in your head before you even set out the door and work on that. Like I always tell people, you know, go into your like, you know, local park or something and work on these things, you know, work on building a shelter and stuff or work on building a fire in the fire pits at a park and seeing like how you guys work together as a team because it's gonna like actually help you if something does happen and you have to stay the night out. Um, does anyone have any questions on anything so far or anything that they want me to cover in that little area? You can type it in the chat in there. And is everyone being able to hear me okay still? It's going good. Okay. Yeah, everything's good. Cool, okay. Uh, one question. Oh, the one. Delorme. Yeah, the Delorme is, um, mine is the ancient one. <laughs> It still works really well, but it's this, it's an in-reach device. And mine, like I said, it is like old, but it works. So I keep it, you know, knock on wood, hopefully it keeps working. I um, mean, what it is, is it's, um, the Garmin took it over actually. This is actually was Delorme had it, but Garmin took it over. And what it does is this one actually will do a lot of different stuff you can use map share with it and people like in your network if you you know want people to kind of track you they can do that through this this thing though is like gold if you do go out because a lot of places just don't have a signal and this thing goes off of really nice like good satellites so it's worldwide and another thing it does is not only map share but say you're just going to run late for the evening and you know that you can text your friends or family on this and it goes straight to their phone. They don't need to be connected to it. They don't need to have a Delorme at all. They can just like get your text. It will come from a different number. So you'll need to let people know that it's doing that. And yeah, like, so if you have the mini and everything, they are, like I said, great. I, I actually got this one after I got lost on Rainier um, and no one could really contact us and they almost sent search and rescue out for us. And at that point I was like, I need to get one of these because I didn't want people worrying. I knew we were gonna be okay, but no one knew that because we had no signal. So that's when this thing came in hand. Um, so yeah, they're a little bit expensive, but they're they're really well worth it um, just in case something does happen. And we'll kind of go over what happens if you push that SOS button, the, the whole thing for that. Cause um, I'm on search and rescue here in Butte. And so that's why, you know, we're gonna go over when to call search and rescue and how that whole thing looks like. So something does happen you guys know the kind of the process we go through as search and rescue to come and get you if that had to happen. Hopefully that does not happen. Um, but another thing is, so what I wanna go over because we only have an hour is building your fire. So the things that I actually carry and these are really, really lightweight. Like, believe it or not, you can, in a Ziploc bag, these are cotton balls. And what you do with them is put some Vaseline on them. You don't need too much. You don't need to like coat them in Vaseline a lot. Just put a little bit in there in a Ziploc bag. And these things are gonna be your fire starter. I mean, I'm telling you like try them out. Like, you know, if you've got some cotton balls and you've got some Vaseline at home, take these, just put a little bit on there and then light them up with a lighter. I don't take match, I do take matches, but I don't really like trust them. Um, I've had the waterproof ones not work sometimes. So yeah, these in a Ziploc, they're really lightweight. They're not gonna take up any room in your pack. 
And um, yeah, so these are one that I would take for a fire starter, and like definitely, I always do just because it's so lightweight. And I know that's one thing like with a lot of you, yep, dryer lint is a perfect one too. Um, everyone got with dogs has plenty of that, I'm sure. And another thing I take sometimes and these things, if I'm not using the cotton balls are, I they literally are 1.58 ounces. And they're these fire starters. And what they are is they're like an instant fire and they'll build up to four fires. And they're actually, um, what you do is you just put a little bit on the ground or on your like kindling and it's gonna start your fire. And this will actually start four fires and it will be under like, it's for water too. So if it's like rainy outside and you need to, that's one thing that these are good with is because Vaseline is actually waterproof. So if you're in an area or you're in the snow or it's raining out or it's a little damper or like wherever you're going to be, that's why these are really good to have um, with the Vaseline just because if something does happen and you can't get something started for whatever reason, you can always rely on these um, just because they are waterproof. The one thing I don't ever take and I've tried it is some people say that chapstick. Uh, so, oh yeah. So someone just asked, I was holding the cotton balls and the petroleum jelly. And you can just put those in a Ziploc. Um, one thing I don't trust, and some people say it works, is they're like, well, you can use your chapstick. I have never had that work. And the reason why a lot of chapsticks anymore are made with so many different products in them that they're not gonna light up. They're, if it was just like a beeswax, it probably would. But like I said, I have never ever got that to work. Some people will use the flints. Um, I actually teach a class up at the Montana Tech here, and I've had my students where they have a lot of trouble trying to build fires with that flint and getting a spark, and they get really frustrated, and they instantly would just go to the cotton balls. So you can try that too, bring one with you. Um, but the problem is, is if something, if it's getting dark out and you're really trying to start a fire, you don't want to be spending a lot of time on it. You just want to get it lit. Um, so that's why I just use those two things. And with your fire, what you're going to want to do is if you have someone, have them go start like bundling up a bunch of kindling, you know, get like the duff on the ground. You like you can get little pine needles that are just like dying. Those are really good fire starters. So you want to build that base and then you want to get kindling and you want to start building your fire. So if you're looking at it, you've got your like sawdust on there, which is like, the, you know, your fire starter. And then you want to put that kindling on there, which is just your like really small little twigs and stuff. And then what you want to do next is you want to get like bigger logs that you want to put on and you want to have a stack. So if you're thinking about it, have a stack that's going to get you through the whole night. So you're going to want someone, if it's by yourself, you're going to be doing a lot of back and forth, back and forth through the woods to look for that wood. But if you have someone, that's their job and they're like the fire keeper. They're gonna make sure that fire is going all like, like all night long. And the reason why is fire is morale boosting. It's amazing what that fire will do. I don't know how many times I've been around a fire and it's like everyone kind of just gets like real giddy and they just get really happy. Um, so that's what you wanna do. And then what I also use, we'll kind of go down the list there. So fire and then for shelter, you can use a lot of different things. So if you have like, does anyone know like what a bivy is or those emergency shelters? I have these, they're like the survival outdoor ones, the soul is the, what I have. I keep this, it's really like super lightweight. It packs down really well. This is what I usually bring with me. Um, I put it in the bottom of my pack because I have an Osprey, it's the Kite 36 and it has that lower bottom section. That section is perfect for putting your first aid in. You can put one of these in it and it doesn't take up much room. Um, but what these do, and I'll take this out and show you, is you can use this as a shelter and I'll put in other things, but it's lightweight, but it also is gonna be a signal. And here is why. It's really shiny. So what you can do, if you already have a shelter built out of, a lightweight tarp, which you're probably thinking right now, oh my gosh, why am I bringing all this for just a day hike? But they're super lightweight. This stuff can like wrap around other stuff in your pack and you can all put it in the back. Like it just, yeah, or you can like put around stuff in there. But these like tarps make wonderful shelters because what you can do is just unfold them. You can make them into a teepee style with putting your trekking poles on them. Um, so if you have that, 
this is going to become your signal and it's also going to be for your warmth. The only thing I don't recommend is, does anyone have those like really, really lightweight, they, they come in like a small package of um, the emergency blanket that's really thin. Does anyone have those? If they do, be very careful with those. Those are amazing for making a signal. And, but if you open that package up and I've done this a couple of times, I'm like, oh boy, you open it up and it shreds. If you catch it on anything, it just will shred into a million pieces. And then you're kind of like, oh, I just lost my signal and possibly my shelter. So just be really careful with those um, and use those in a, like, you know, like, okay, this is the last resort kind of thing. Or I, you know, or just be really careful when twigs and stuff, because once it's punctured, it's going to take off and you'll never see it again. Um, so we don't want that to happen. So that's why I just carry one of these. They're really, they're a lot thicker and you can use them for, you know, signaling, like I said, or your shelter is you just wrap yourself up like a little burrito in it. And you're not gonna be, you know, like when you say like we're going out for the day and we might possibly be for the whole evening, you're not thinking comfort, you know? I mean, you're not, if you're thinking comfort, you might as well just say it's a camping trip at that point. What we're doing is we're just gonna be like, okay, we're gonna get through the night. It might be miserable, but we're gonna definitely get through it. And so that's what you're doing is you're doing that kind of like little maintenance plan. And so that's one thing I bring. How do you use that as a signal? So how do you use this signal? Good question. So signaling, since we kind of like went over and for shelters, another thing I wanna say before we go into signaling is for shelters, you can use your tarp as, you know, like, like I said, kind of an A-frame and there's a ton of like, I could, oh my gosh, there's like, if you go through YouTube and you just put in bushcrafting, you're going to like come up with a ton of like shelter devices and you're not here to build like a log cabin. You know, we're not here to like, you know, build a bunch of stuff in the woods. We're here to get through the night. And you can also like, if you don't have a tarp and you're like, ah, I don't want to use this because this is my signal. And I, you know, I just want to use this last resort and you are by some rocks. I know around here, there's a lot of little nooks and crannies in the rocks. And if you're like out and you're hiking, waypoint those. Unless you're like, if you're hiking around and you're like, I always waypoint stuff and like my little register in the back of my head. And I'm like, ah, oh, you know what? There was a little like cave back in there or else, oh, look at those nooks and crannies between the rocks. You can create a lot of stuff from nature itself with your shelters. Um, and like I said, you can also, you know, build up like a nice little shelter, like against a rock. You can do all sorts of things out there. My suggestion um, for building shelters is, like I said, I just do a tarp and an A-frame and I just put the poles on the end and make it nice and tight because you want your shelter to last. You don't want to make it look like, like crap and, you know, it goes blowing off in the middle of the night if the wind picks up or rain gets in. So you kind of got to look at that too for your shelter is always look at where your weather is coming from or where it possibly could come from. Like if you're getting out in the woods and you're hiking around and all of a sudden you get lost or you know, okay, you know, we're not getting back tonight. We got to make a shelter. Don't be putting it on the side that the wind's blowing. You're like, okay, that's probably not a good place to put it. Maybe go on the other side or put it in the trees, put it in some shelter um, so that's where you're going to want to build your shelter at. You're not going to want to put it like right out into the elements or in a wash or an area that might get washed out. If the rain came through that, that would not be a good situation. And that's when search and rescue might be getting called. Um, so those are the things that you want to kind of be careful with your shelter. Um, what brand is it? It's all, it's actually just the thermal, it's called the thermal bivy. And it literally, I mean, I, don't know, but it doesn't, it doesn't really weigh hardly anything. Um, and so, yeah, I've had this one for a while now and like, luckily I have not had to use it, but it's always there if I need it. So does anyone else have anything on shelters at all? Nothing new. No. Okay. All right. Signaling. So we're talking about this first and cause I got some other stuff here that we want to use if we're going to signal is for signal this, what you will do is you can actually take it out and just, you don't have to fold the whole thing out or you can, you can definitely like fold it completely out. And what you're gonna do with this is you wanna be visible. So if you think about it, think 
visibility with your signals. You don't want to put your signal where your shelter is because you just put your shelter in the trees, hopefully, or your shelter is by the rocks or you're like nooked into a cave. So that's definitely not where you want your signal because you want to, I want to be seen. I want someone to find me. So what you're going to do with this is you're going to think, okay, where would this be really good? And look for a wide open area. And when we make signals, what we're doing is you can put this on the ground. Um, I talk to helicopter pilots all the time um, for my job and stuff. And they're always telling me we can see that like right off the bat. That is like the best thing you can do is something shiny and bright, you know, because it's just like everything you're like, oh, something shiny and bright and they'll catch their eye. So this can be on the ground and you can put it out in its full entirety and just put a bunch of rocks around it so it doesn't blow away. Another thing you can do on top of that is you can use surveyors tape. This is yellow. Um, I would you know, recommend like really bright colors. You can get the reflective stuff for nighttime, but that stuff is super expensive. And um, we'll go over what to do for a night signal, but surveyors tape, it doesn't you know, take up much weight, but I would do like a bright pink or an orange and make them about three feet long. And you're going to just tie them off onto trees, like whatever way the wind is blowing, because what that's going to do is it's actually doing a few things is it's going to first off a helicopter. If they have to come search for you, they're going to find drones can see it because a lot of search and rescue are going drones now, but they can also find you really instant and they can also tell which way the wind is blowing. So you're actually doing them a big favor by having this if they do need to come for you. Um, but yeah, you're, so you've got this, if you are, have that on the ground, you can also make an SOS and make like different objects on the ground, because what that does is when they're searching for you, especially I know this with drone work with search and rescue, it is super hard to find people. I did not think it would be that hard to find people um, with the drone. I thought they're going to stand out, obviously, but we don't. Um, we had a drone for a search and rescue that we were practicing with and we were like actually had someone on the ground and we we're trying to find them in the trees and we for the life of us could not find that person they looked like a tree log and we we're like oh my gosh that is actually really hard to find someone um but does anyone have any questions about signaling no no you guys are so silent Hopefully I'm doing okay here. But another, like I said, with the SOS, you can make it out of rocks, you can make it out of sticks, and you can make anything else. If you're like, I don't wanna build an SOS, you can make anything that doesn't look natural, they're gonna like cue in on. So if you're out there and they're like, that doesn't look natural, it's probably like, just make everything look like a little different out there. Um, another thing is your fire. So hopefully you've got your fire going, you've had your shelter already made, and so the next thing you can do is like, if you want a really good signal for nighttime, build that fire big. I mean, you just wanna make it the biggest you can get um, because you can see that for miles. And you can actually use, if you guys have like headlamps with a little strobe on it, that's another really, really good thing for at night. Um, we had a guy that was just hunting, got lost in the woods overnight. We went searching for him and it was amazing the fire we could see from like a couple miles away up on another like hillside and was just like flickering and he had made a really huge fire over there and another time we were out practicing and we had our strobes on and it is absolutely amazing how far these things can travel through the dark um, for your signal for the day if you've got your sos out you put this out and then you've got your surveyors tape and you're like i just want to be seen i really want to be seen so take some green pine boughs um, off a tree and put that on top of your fire and that is going to create a huge amount of smoke and so yeah so has anyone got any questions with that stuff no awesome someone says i'm doing great thank you brandy um so let me say <laughs> I'm not rambling. I'm doing, <laughs> oh, you're doing great. This is very informative. I'm learning tons. <laughs> so another thing is, um, so you've built your shelter, you've got your fire going, or your like friend has got the fire going, they're tending it, things are going good. The one thing I want to get across, and like I said, and um, we talked about is my mental status. 
And that is a huge, huge component to this whole thing. And I cannot get this through um, enough is what happens is you start to panic. And all of a sudden it's like, your brain just goes, it's like, it's, I don't even know how it happens. And like I said, I, I don't know what happened there um, when I got lost that first time. And even the second time I got lost the second time on Rainier, my friend didn't help. She was like, we're going to die. We have no food. Oh my God. And <laughs> so we were both like feeding off each other. And I was like, Oh my God. So the next thing, you know, we know our mental status just tanked and we actually took a break. What happened was we were both like, you know what, let's just take a break. We got some snacks left in our backpack. We sat down, literally sat down for maybe five minutes, looked at each other, took a snack. And we were both like, you know what, we're going to be okay. We're going to get out of this thing. And it was like something just reset. And that's all it takes sometimes is what happens is when you are hiking and you're out there and the next thing what's going to happen is it's going to get dusk. When it's daylight, your, re your mind's really like, this is good. Things are going great. As soon as dusk hits, it's weird. Like it's all of a sudden like something like, you know, it's that human, it's that trigger. And it's like things, snacks do make things okay. And we'll go over snacks in a minute because I am the snack queen, Jennifer. <laughs> so what happens with your uh, mental status is you start to panic that dusk rolls around. And I've, I'm sure like a lot of you on here has probably gone through that where all of a sudden you're like, we're not going to make it back down this trail. And it's, it's like things start to go through your head. You're like, I don't think this is going well. And then you start talking to your friend. You're like, well, are we, you know, were we going to stay out all night? And then you just start heightening it and you both start feeding off that. And you're like, all of a sudden things just start panic mode because it gets dark. So like what you want to do before it gets dark is make a plan and be like, you know what, this isn't gonna work. We're probably gonna have to stay the night out. We thought we went to look at maybe a cabin off trail. We went to a lake off trail. We're, we're just, it's getting dark. We don't wanna go out in the dark. It's not safe, you know, and hopefully, you know, that's a whole different story if someone was like actually hurt. I mean, what you'd have to do, that's like for a, a whole nother class. But if like, you're just like, we need to spend the night out now. We're not gonna make it back to the trailhead. It's just not gonna happen. The first thing you wanna do take a breather I always say just breathe really fine. just nice deep breath calm yourself down and calm your friend down or like she can calm you down and be like okay things are going to be okay we're going to get out of this and then go into your plan and the thing like I do is I do that ABC so I do not forget anything and so A is well okay I told people where I was and I, you know, that person is very reliable. And so hopefully they're going to, if something does happen. And that's why I said these, like the inreaches are invaluable because if you are just like, you know what, we have a game plan. We've got all of our stuff in our backpack to stay out for the night. We're going to be okay. No one's hurt. You know, luckily this is like gold. If you don't have cell service and you did leave someone your plan and you didn't come back, like a, I, that's what happened to me, you know, usually search and rescue won't come out until the next day sometimes if it's a really bad situation we will come out during the like night hours to come find you but this is one of those things where if you do like realize you're gonna have to stay the night out you can contact your like important contact and say hey we're gonna stay the night out we made a bad choice we didn't get back to you know the trail and now we're not gonna get back to the trailhead but we're okay don't send search and rescue we're okay that's why i like to say have these things on um, just because when we go over search and rescue part this thing is like invaluable but so that's your a your b is the first thing is maybe you just got you and another friend it's like two of you then just say hey do you want to go start like looking for fire i'm going to like look for a shelter you know like, i'm going to go put a like place up for a shelter and i'll work on that why don't you do the fire and you don't really need a signal at that point because you're not lost you know you're by the trail so that's what you got to start thinking to like to yourself is if you're lost, then you definitely have to go into that mode of, okay, I need to be this signal, but maybe you're not, maybe you're just realized we're not going to make it back. Let's just have a camp out, you know, and let's just, it might not be too fun, but we're going to have to do that because we don't want to go in the dark um, because that's when all the critters come out and that's like really scary. Um, yes. For staying warm is I do have, I bring extra clothing with me, but that, this you can actually like wrap it around you you know like 
I won't take it all out, but this thing is amazing. If you do get one of these, you can take them out. How much heat these actually collect. So definitely think about something like that. Um, just because, you know, like here in Montana, the temperature does drop. I always take my I don't, puffy jacket with me. Like this thing goes everywhere with me all season long. I have never, um, taken this thing out of my pack. It's really lightweight and it is a lot of warm. I also take shells with me as well. And just because they're really lightweight, um, the sole that I have is the thermal bivy. Um, so those are the things you want to go over. That's your B is you want to start making your fire and you want to make your shelter and your signal if you're lost. If you're not lost, don't worry about the signal. So that's your next step is get your mind doing something. It's just, it's amazing how if you like focus on something and you don't focus on the dark and what is going on around you, it's gonna make your life so much better. And then talk to yourself. Like if you're solo and you like know for some reason you're just not gonna make it back to the trail and you just made that decision to stay out for the evening, even though you don't want to, but you just don't feel safe enough going back, then just start talking to yourself out loud. Don't, you know, like I always just like to talk to myself verbally out loud. And the reason why we do that is because it actually will lower your heart rate if you speak it rather than say it in your mind. So if you're out there, just kind of like take a deep breath, be like, okay, I'm going to go pick the fire. And because what that also is doing is it's making you go through that plan. So if you like, you know, like if you don't verbalize it, it's more, it's easier to, if this makes any sense, if you don't verbalize things, it's sometimes easier to forget it. Um, whereas if you say something, then you can be like, okay, I'm going to go make some fire. I'm going to like look for some shelter. And if you're lost, I'm going to say, okay, now I need to make a signal. It's getting dark. So, oh, I'm going to like make a big fire tonight. That'll keep me warm. It's also going to, you know, whoever is looking for me is going to see me hopefully really quick. And then I'm going to start putting my light on strobe. Like just verbalize that and keep talking to yourself. And if you're with your friend, do the same thing and make jokes. You know, like I, when we were lost on Rainier, we made so many like bad jokes to each other. And it's like, yeah, in singing, it's like soothing. So just do those things. If you're going to get like, you know, where you're in that situation with your friends or something and you do get lost. And um, so those are the ABCs that you want to go through. So now you're like, okay, Let's go into that next scenario. You were off trail. Now you turned yourself around and you are lost and you're with someone and you've taken that deep breath and you're like, okay, we're lost. We're not going to keep going further because now we're going to be really lost and don't get mad at the other person and don't get mad at yourself. It's easy to beat yourself up to go, oh my gosh, I should know better than this. This is embarrassing. I don't want to call search and rescue. I don't want to call anyone this. Um, but just, you know, talk yourself out. you can go, okay, this is okay. We're going to do this. And then like, if you're with your friend, do that fire shelter and then do the signal. The next thing you're going to do is if you've got to, like, if you're severely lost, it's usually, this is where search and rescue comes in. Unless someone is like really hurt and something is wrong with someone. Um, if you can make it through the night, I know <laughs> we would rather have you make it through the night unless there is a dire situation. If the weather is turning and you know you're in a blizzard situation and it is getting like life threatening out there, then absolutely 100% contact search and rescue. Um, don't like second guess it at that point. If you're even doubting yourself, if you're like, I don't think I can do this. You know, even if you're like, and sometimes it can be a mental if your mental state goes and you're like, I don't think I can do this. I don't think I can do this. As much as you keep talking yourself down that ledge, you might just have to be like, you know what? I need help and I need to call search and rescue. Even though you have the right ability and the right stuff for the evening, you might just mentally not be able to cope with it. And that's okay. It's okay to call search and rescue. They're going to understand and they're going to get you out of that situation. Um, and let's see. So that's like I said, we just walk yourself through those steps verbally and verbally like your friend and keep doing that. Keep doing it throughout the night. You know, keep making those jokes to your friend um, that might not be the best jokes and, you know, tease and do whatever, you know, if you guys know each other well, do that kind of stuff. 
and go with people that you really know are going to help you in those situations too. Um, you know, like talk to people before you go out with them. Maybe if they're new, go have a drink with them, go, you know, hang out with them a couple times before you go on long hikes with them and just go maybe do, you know, easy distances to kind of gauge, okay, would this person be okay if something did go wrong and we had to stay the night out? Do they have that plan in place? Would they be able to make a shelter or a fire? And if they want, if they're new to it, ask them, be like, hey, I, you know, I'd really like to maybe practice if you know we ever get situation but i would really like to practice with you guys and if they're like cool with it awesome that is great um and hopefully they would be and they'd want to go to a local park and work on these things um you know just i would suggest like taking down the shelters in the local park they might frown on that if you kept them up i don't know um but so you've got those things and everyone keeps mentioning the snacks I love my snacks. So I'm going to keep going down the list of what I like to bring and some suggestions bring. So you've got that tarp possibly like really lightweight. You've got a bivy that's really, really lightweight as well. You've got your cotton balls with the Vaseline, another very lightweight thing. That's not going to take up a lot of room in that day pack. And then um, I like to, and people think I'm really crazy for this and is I take olives. I love taking olives with me and I also take, you guys can see this, these are kosher dill pickles. And the reason why I take these is they have a lot of salt and there's just something about them. Every time I've brought them, people look at me like, what are those? And I'm like, they're olives. And they're like, can I have one of those? And they instantly go and buy these. Um, they're just great to have. They are a lot of salt and especially with the pickles too. You can like, if you want to, and if you're like really wanting, you can do the pickle juice. I just sometimes will pour it out, but these things are great little snacks um, to have. These are like the Mount Olive pickle pack. You get them like a little six thing. And these always come in a bunch of different ones. They've got so much that, I mean, ones with flavor in them, like little herbs and stuff like that. It's just amazing what these two little things will do um, for morale. Like imagine if you've got a fire going, you bring out this and you're like gold. Another thing that I like to carry, and the reason why I carry these is because sometimes um, we can get, when we are just feeling a little nervous, I can't eat. Like if I'm about ready to like go take a test or do anything, I literally, it's just something within me, I can't eat, I can't do anything and so if that happens when I'm out and if something did happen back there what I like to do is I bring stuff that is really edible uh, I don't do well on trying to eat the like cliff bars I just can't stomach that stuff it's like it just goes like completely dry in my mouth and it's like I can't stomach it. I can't even chew it so I have found the easiest thing for me to do is if I'm really nervous or I'm upset or something's just going wrong and if you can't eat anything because you need to, because you're going to need to get through the night, you're going to need those calories. So you could just need that sugar and stuff. So you don't start bonking is I take with me a bunch of like these go-go squeeze packs. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of these, but these things are amazing. They're the almond blend puddings and they're like the chocolate ones and they are so good and they go down really, really easy. So if you're out there and you're just like really flustered, this is really, really good to take with you because it goes down easy. The applesauce packs are really good too. They break down really easy. They just fold up. Um, and then they have actually this like top on them. So if you can't eat the whole thing, you can screw the top back on. Another one that I like to take out with me is these. They're called split and they're actually cashew butter and sometimes a sour cherry blend and you just kind of fold them together like that and you kind of just knead them and then you just eat them um, and they come in like a bunch of different flavors this is really good to take with as well i take these little raw honey packs they're really tiny and this one is just made by Nature Nates. They're all natural, just raw, unfiltered honey. These are really good to take if, like I said, if something is happening. What about food and bears? If you're out and you've got like honey, <laughs> well, let me tell you, you know, I'm just kidding. Um, 
if you're, you know, like I said, bear spray, I'm always taking, like I have my bear spray with me all the time and all year round. And if I'm out there and it's at night, have a pack, like with your pack, if you've got, um, I haven't gone over this yet, but if you've got the paracord with you, hang your pack up somewhere with your food and just, you know, every once in a while you can take it down to take your snacks out. But don't ever have your food on you at your shelter for the night um, just because, yeah, it's not only bears, but the little critters are what I always have had to worry about. Those things have actually literally, no joke, eaten my gloves. Um, I don't know what in the world, but in the middle of the night, I accidentally left my gloves out and they ate the thumbs off both of my gloves. So I never put anything, yeah, in around my like tent or my shelters anymore, just for that reason. Um, just because, like I said, bears, but they're not the only thing. Like little critters in the middle of the night, mice and stuff will love this stuff, and they will just chew. They'll even chew through your backpack. Um, so that's why I said, you know, you have to kind of hang it out there. If you do, you know, you can take those gear sacks they have. It's like you are um, sack. It's called. I don't have one of those, um, but you can get those or a bear canister. But at that point, if you're taking a bear canister with you on a day trip, that's pretty much a camping trip at that point, I think. <laughs> so, so I would say your backpack it kind of becomes um, that like food storage. It's that's going to have to because you're not going to be carrying. If you're going out for the day, you're not carrying a bear canister. You're not carrying all this other stuff. So you have to do with what you have. You can use, if you don't want to use your backpack because you want to have it near you, because like maybe you were using it for support or you just want to, you know, have it next to you. You can actually um, take like those dry bags. Like OR has some really, really lightweight ones. And sometimes I'll actually put like my clothes inside of one of those and just in case it rains i always like to stick stuff in there so you can actually do that as well um just eat all your snacks before you go to sleep well you could do <laughs> then you'd be out of snacks for the next day so and another thing i always carry for snacks is these are morale boosters right here uh like i said i am the snack queen i have reese's peanut butter cups that i take with me I have these mini Heath bars. These things are amazing. Um, and it's amazing, you know, and I have Jolly Ranchers too that I'll take with me. So I just always take a little bag of these things because as everyone will say, oh, I don't, I don't ever eat sweets. I don't like that stuff. I'm, I'm trying to cut back on sweets. As soon as you bring these out in the woods and you were having to stay out overnight, like, yeah. I'm pretty sure they would probably take a snack from you. So, yeah. Uh, another thing like I like to take with me, and this um, is not on a snack agenda because I don't really, well, I do have snacks for my uh, little dog companion that just abandoned me right now. I don't know where she's at, but I always take her little treats too, because if you forget those, you're not probably getting through the night. But Another thing I take with me, like I said, is I don't bring this big of paracord, but you can bring paracord. This thing will actually help you build the shelter. It can hang the food. It's like, it can do so much. And again, it doesn't really weigh much. You can get really smaller ones. They have different lengths that you can get. Um, you can get like a hundred feet would be probably um, doable. This is like overkill. Um, and then I always have my little OR sack of toilet paper and my shovel and my hand sanitizer all in this little pack right here that I take with me. Um, this comes out on every day trip just because I just am one of those people. This is always going to get used, um, but always have this on hand. Another thing I like to take out and sometimes is these little, not the best, I will admit, like filtering water is like if you're like near a stream and stuff if it's clean like it's like clear water these like these little aqua tablets you can get them at walmart you can pretty much get them anywhere they're not going to taste well but they're going to do the job and they're going to get you through the night if you need to take them you can bring a filter with you you can boil water if you've got the means to boil water you can use a little can that's another thing is if you find cans sometimes here in montana we'll be hiking around there's old cabins use the old cabin as a shelter and they might have like old tins in there, like tuna fish cans, stuff like that. If you're building a fire, you can sometimes use those tuna fish cans to, you know, like make a little like water, boil the water in and stuff. But 
these things are nice to have just because, and I always take them out of the glass. I don't ever take the glass with me. I don't take anything glass when I go backpacking or hiking, um, just because I'm afraid it's going to crack in my backpack because I'm pretty rough with that stuff. So I always just take those out, put those in like a little plastic container. Um, and how big is the shovel? Let me, I will take it out and I'll show you what I have here. So I have... <laughs> I have like three different things of toilet paper <laughs> and these are um, the toilet paper that I like to use is if I, you know, because a lot of times, I don't know if you guys have read this, but they're actually suggesting wag bags. I have a bunch of those too. Wag bags are just um, actually you poo in them and then you take them out with you. They're actually suggesting that. I actually use a lot of the RV toilet paper. Um, some of it, a lot of it is biodegradable. Um, so that's a lot of the stuff that I use. It does take a little bit more um, just because it is super thin. Um, and then, like I said, I always carry hand sanitizer in there with me. And then my shovel is really tiny. It's actually, it's a you dig it one. And it's literally that big right there. Like you can kind of see how big it is. And then it's just this pops out like that. So it's it's really, really nice to have. And then it just fits and I always keep it in. OR has these nice little dry bags and I just keep it all in this dry bag right here and just kind of all stick it together. So I always know where it's at and I you know literally can just throw it right in my backpack or just keep it in there all the time. And then one thing I never go for the day without is the handy map of the area I'm going to be in and like really, really like study that and get to know it. And the only like a lot of people will have onyx and stuff too, which is great. Um, the only problem I've had with onyx is I do have a friend, uh, she has onyx um, and we've been out a couple times and for some reason onyx has not matched up to the map. It's really weird, but like there was supposed to be a lake and it said it was a swamp in Onyx, but I'm like, no, I think it's a lake. And she was like, no, it's does a swamp. And so we got in this argument back and forth. And so Onyx sometimes will do that. And I've noticed, um, I was actually backcountry skiing this last weekend and we were using Onyx and the area that we were in, it was saying it wasn't in the right area and it wasn't showing the road we were on. It was showing like it was off somewhere else and it was a trail. So just kind of be cautious, you know, always carry a map of the area just because if you do need to get out, um, you know how to use it and you can like maybe, you know, take a navigation class. There's a bunch online that you can take um, and then have your compass. I always keep the compass and I keep all this stuff in another little bag. I keep my lighter in there. I kind of keep everything like, you know, like hard stuff all together. I keep my snacks all together. So if I need something, I know exactly where it's at. And uh, so that's what you want to do. And also I carry extra batteries um, just because your headlight might go out. Someone else's might go out. And I always carry either the triple A's. A lot of them take triple A's now. So find out, you know, like what your like um, friends are using, which I like to do is ask them be like, hey, you know, what do you guys take in your backpack for the day? And have them like actually take it out and look at it and be like, oh, okay. So you carry that. And then you'll know too, if something happens, you'll be like, don't you have that like, sh like that tarp in your backpack? And they're like, oh yeah. And so you can use that, use each other's things back and forth, you know, like, so that's why you know, I suggest like, when you're going out with someone, just like spend the day like be like hey do you want to come over and like bring what you're going to take in your backpack and do it at the trailhead too um like my day pack is a kite 36 it's by osprey i have a couple different ones they i have a deuter as well uh that one's for more backcountry skiing and that one's about a 38 40 i think it's a 38 but it actually expands a little bit i don't ever in this one i'll be honest with you it's a 36 and I, i'm maxing it out <laughs> it's just I I am one of those people like if I go on a day hike I am taking a lot of stuff with me but it's pretty lightweight stuff so if something does happen I'm not like you know taking the kitchen sink with me kind of thing but it will get me through the night 
and it will get me and my friends through the night if something does happen. Um, another thing, let me see, I do take, and this is an old rock climbing shoe bag. <laughs> this is my first aid kit. I don't really have like one of those, you can buy like a pre-made kit. I have those, I definitely have that. I have like three or four of them, but what I've done is I've opened up those and I've created my own first aid kit. Um, so that's why I love doing this. Uh, let me see. Since... Oh, awesome. Jen uh, says, since hiking with me, she's upgraded the bag size and carry more stuff like this first aid. Yay. Thank you, Jen. <laughs> but yeah, so just like make your own first aid. It doesn't need to be like, you know, just kind of mix and match. And what I do, and this is embarrassing to admit, but in my first aid kit, just because, you know, I mean, everyone's different and you have all these different things is I carry and I'll kind of go through this stuff. I do carry embarrassing, but I get a lot of uh, gastrointestinal problems when I'm hiking sometimes if I'm eating certain foods and, you know, to be a little bit nicer to myself and everyone else I'm around. I take a lot of the um, like Imodium AD or Gas X pills with me, um, just Rolaids, Tums, just because I don't know what it is with my system sometimes. So I just do that. Um, and what I also take with me is oh Tums. I'm always taking Tums. And someone else in your party, when they're you know when they're upset, they might get an upset stomach and they might not be able to take anything in. That's when that those gels come out that you can give them. And then give them a, you know, something to kind of settle their stomach down like a Tums or they have Pepto-Bismol in the chew form. I love those things. I take them all the time with me because you just never know what's going to happen if you have to spend the night out. And, you know, if you've got to spend more than one night out, it's good to have that kind of stuff too because if you have to drink water and you're using those tablets, sometimes this can really irritate the stomach and some people can get diarrhea off of it. Um, so that's why I always take like Imodium AD and um, my... Uh, Ranger is giving me toys. Another thing I like to take in my first aid is Afrin. The reason why I take this is it actually opens up the nasal, like, you know, it's just for sometimes you can get stuffed up, um, especially I, when I'm crying a lot and I'm really panicked, it's just like I get really stuffed up. And so what I do is I take this with me. I take Afrin, um, just, it's really, really nice to have. And then, you know, I take, ibuprofen with me just in case you know I need it if I start getting really bad headaches I take another one I take is liquid bandage this thing is really nice to have this is the only glass that I ever ever take with me and the reason why is because it's it'd be really hard to take this out of the container but this like liquid skin is great it's just a nice bandage in case someone gets cut or you get cut this kind of thing so like I said I take balls like cough drops uh, just all sorts of little doodads can go in your first aid kit, but I am never without that for the day. And it is, this is probably, I would say, and I have another lighter. I always take another lighter in my first aid kit and I take eye drops. Like I said, there is like so much stuff, alcohol prep pads, gauze pads. This is probably by far the heaviest thing in my pack besides me taking the water and stuff. You know, water is going to weigh a lot, um, but rather than that, I think it's my first aid kit that is actually taking up the most for my for like day pack just because I I'm always like one of those people that something can always go wrong you can trip over something you can hit something you can fall down something so I'm always thinking in that direction when I go out for the day is I'm thinking those what if things can happen and that's why I'm always just constantly preparing for the worst case scenario I hate to say that but it's just one of those things where it can and will happen. It's just when it's going to happen. And, um, you know, hopefully if it does happen, it's going to be very mild and nothing's going to go wrong. And yeah, the dog emergency slings, um, someone asked that's those I've been eyeing up as well, just because my dog, one of them, she weighs like 400 pounds, I swear. Um, she doesn't, but she, you know, turns limp when you try to like pick her up is yeah, want to get one of those. So if you do go with dogs, think of them too. I always bring tons of treats for my dogs. I bring them a little bowl for water and that's why I carry extra water too, is to give them water during the day. And they, I actually give them electrolytes. I love to give my dog electrolytes. Um, the ones I bring electrolytes that don't have a lot of like sugars and stuff in them. 
they are great for dogs as well, like the Pedialytes and stuff like that, because dogs, I mean, they can get stressed out too, or they can feed off of your stress. If you're feeling that stress and you're like, you know, starting to panic, they're going to feel that and they're going to have that same problem that you're going to have. So you're going to have to talk them down as well. Another thing I like to bring is a knife. I just bring like a simple little small one. This is a little um, Healy. It's called the Ranger. It's, you know, very simple. Um, and then this, this one, I really want to go over and I love bringing this little thing out. Is, uh, <clears throat> I always carry something that if something does go wrong and it's the worst case scenario, it's going to make me feel like home. And this is what makes me feel like home. I don't know why. If you guys, let me, uh, it's lights. I don't know what it is, but it's Christmas lights for me. And I bring these things every time I go out there, the super light white ones. I think I got these at Walmart for $1.99 and they've been lasting for like years. And it's just, I hang them up. I hang them up around my camp. I hang them on my tent and I always take them with me because if something does go wrong, I can put these up and instantly, I don't know what it is. It will just make me feel so much better. So I always suggest to people, think about something that will make you feel like your home or something that will make you feel good and then use that and take that with you if, if it's like family member photos or anything like that or just little like trinkets that someone gave you something that makes you like feel really good inside take that with you on your day hikes and keep it with you and it's amazing what that's going to do if you just you bring that out and all of a sudden your camp that you're all panicked about you built your fire and your shelter all of a sudden you hang these on a tree it's like everything's going to go down and everything's going to be okay. And it's amazing how that's going to feel. Um, I think I'm running over time, ain't I? Oh yeah. Six minutes. But that's, and another thing I like to bring, I'll go quick is extra pair of socks. And this is actually really cool. So I always take a little bit thicker sock with me, but what you can do with these, believe it or not, is I'll show you here is I actually, um, Ranger apparently wants my socks, is you can actually put your Nalgene in the sock. Oh, Ranger, you can actually do that. And it's like a little bottle warmer as well. And it's your sock. So I always just put like one of my Nalgene's into my sock. And then I just have an extra pair of socks. And I also got myself a water bottle warmer. Because a lot of time what I'll do, especially in the winter time, is I'll actually put like really boil, almost boiling water in one of my Nalgene's. I'll put the sock on it and it will keep that warmth. It's amazing how warm it'll keep that with like a really thick sock. Uh, these are like smart wools and yeah, it's like pretty cool. But you can pretty much go through, I've gotten through almost a whole day and my Nalgene's still nice and warm. And I'll put like tea in it or something. Um, sometimes warm electrolytes will be really nice in there. And then I always take an extra pair of gloves just because, like I said, the weather constantly changes. Like, and you have to, especially here in Montana, it's like, oh my gosh, you, you never know what's going to happen. So it's like you just prepare for the worst situation. It can be like sunny the next day, the wind picks up, and then your hands get cold, or someone else's in your party gets a little cold. Um, do I have time to go over the search and rescue? Yeah, yes. you're welcome to go uh, keep going. Okay. I think people can hang out. Um, I know there was a couple questions that I think one about solar. Did you see the one about the solar charger? It says, do you ever oh. take a solar charger and hang it on your backpack to charge your phone, et cetera? I, you know, I used to, I had, I, I can't remember then actually, I think it was, I, I used to take a solar power. Um, and what happened is it never, this is the weird thing. And I know this was a long time ago but I tried charging my phone and stuff on it. And for some reason, the solar wasn't wanting to charge my phone. It wasn't compatible. And so I had a lot of hard time trying to get the solar be compatible with my equipment. So what I do now is I actually have, I don't have it up here with me. It's down in my gear room, but I sometimes, if I know I'm gonna be gone for a long day hike and it might possibly turn into an overnight is I'll take an anchor, um, it's an anchor one and it like will it charges about five times and it will charge everything so yeah the solar ones i they might have changed by now but i just had so much problem trying to get them be compatible like my phone kept saying it wasn't charging like it wasn't detecting that the solar was even a charger so i don't know what was going on there and that might just have been because this has been a while back but 
yeah, that's one thing I just have, haven't done. Well, for my, was the other. Oh, I was going to say with my personal solar experience, I took one of those, like, I forget the name of them, but like the, the panels that you can plug into and it had to be like in full sun to get any oh. sort of charge on my phone. So it was kind of the same thing. I had a, not the best experience. I guess there's a plugin you can get that I'll use yeah. next to try it out. But, um, I, I think that was actually, oh, and then somebody asked about pushing the in reach button. Um, oh yeah. I've heard that. Okay. Yeah, okay, so I'll go into the search and rescue really quick here. So from being on search and rescue, these are the kind of this, this is the scenario and that's why it's really, really good to have preparation for being overnight because of this. Um, I'm on a volunteer search and rescue, most search and rescues are. And if you say you're in that situation, unfortunately someone does get hurt or you're really lost and you know I am gonna need help. I need to push that. So what you do is as soon as you push this SOS button, it is not going to go immediately out to search and rescue. There, there is a huge process that happens beforehand. The first thing is this is going to contact you back and it's going to ask you, basically, are you being serious? And the reason why is because these get pushed a lot. They get switched a lot. And so they don't know if you went, oh crap, I accidentally pushed the wrong button on here or it's switched over accidentally, it happens. Um, and so just to alleviate that problem is now they have a place where it will actually contact you back. And if you don't say something within a certain, like I think it's only a couple, like one or two minutes, if you're just like dead air and you're not like, uh, sorry, that was me, they will actually start going in the process of contacting everyone. So what'll happen is if you don't say anything to them and they're like, okay, this is actually a search and rescue situation. The next thing that this will do is it is going to start contacting your contacts as well as contacting your local um, police department. So that is the first thing it's gonna go through is it will contact your local police department. The police department are going to have to make the decision to contact search and rescue. So the more like information, like you can text dorm, they, they will actually contact you back and forth. Or if you have the ability and they're in your system, contact your like your friends and people that you have in this contact and be like, this is where I'm at. Learn how to use it. Give a waypoint. They should already have the waypoint in the DeLorm. Sometimes the problem has been though with the DeLorm is they need to get permission sometimes. And so that's why it's like good to get your friends and family to have that waypoint as well in there and to let them know your best location, what color you're wearing, where you're at, where you think you're at, the proximity that you're at. So what they're going to do is after they contact your police department, the police department is going to go, okay, how long have they been out? Is it been, you know, a couple hours here? Are we talking five, six hours? What is the weather situation? And so they're gonna like make this decision, yes or no, we're gonna contact search and rescue. We've had a couple instances where we didn't get called until it was late at night, like one, two in the morning, we didn't get called. And it was just because the police were like, we don't think this is a search and rescue, we don't, we're not gonna do it. So that's why I said, just be very cautious um, about search and rescue because after that takes place, the police say, okay, this is, you're lost we're gonna contact search and rescue. The next thing that happens is dispatch will contact search and rescue. And what happens next is search and rescue, if it's volunteer for the most part, a lot of places like here are volunteer, is we get contacted via phone on a text. And that text is gonna go out and it's gonna say, come to the barn of two people out, lost at proximity, and that's all we know. We don't know hardly anything because Delorme, the police, they're trying to contact that information for us, but we know we're getting sent out. So what happens next is when we get that, I would get it. And the next thing I live about, I would say it takes me about almost 15 to 20 minutes to get to our barn. And that's just how it is for the most part. A lot of search and rescue crews, they're not right there. They're not within a minute to five minutes, 10 minutes. They're sometimes living a distance out. So it's going to take a bit of time to get where we go to get the equipment. And then once we get to the barn, you know, you start calculating this in your head. You're like, oh, geez. 
So once we get to the barn, we need enough people to go out and we need to get the equipment ready. We need to know what we need to get. And hopefully the police at that point dispatches contact us and said, they're in this terrain. You're going to need to get in there with hiking boots or you're going to need to bring an ATV. You know, if it's in the dark, you're going to maybe need snowmobile. Depends on the time of year, which, you know, we have that stuff there, but we have to hook it up to the trucks. We have to get it going. We have to get the right crew. And then we have to like get a man center going, which is a big trailer. And we need to bring that all to where you are, like in that proximity, like a trailhead or something like that. Then we need to get set up. We need to get our teams in place, which is basically going over a briefing of what we're looking at and where you are probably at. We're looking on the map. We're going to find that info out. They're trying to give us waypoint directions for you. We're doing coordinates. So that's basically how this works. And so we're looking at probably, it takes us about two, you're not looking, you're probably looking at us. If you're in a good area and you're not like really off, you know, in the woods, you're probably looking at three to four hours out. Um, it's just, that's how it is with search and rescue. We're, you know, it's just because we're volunteer a lot of the time. And a lot of time, that's just how it is. We just, it takes a lot of process to go through it. So when you do go out, you know, and you have to spend the night out, it's, it's, it's easy to get really panicked and go, why is search and rescue not here? I called them like, you know, three hours ago. Just think of those things that are going on behind the scenes. And, you know, we're, we're trying to get to you, but it's going to take us some time because, you know, sometimes we get the wrong coordinates. Your phone might give us the wrong coordinates or it might be in the wrong kind of coordinates. We've had that happen a couple of times where a lady gave us coordinates and we put them into our system and it was in a totally different area because it just was off just a tiny bit and they weren't read right. Um, so there's things like that that can happen. Um, it's just, you know, technology is what it is. Um, we've had computer glitches where we haven't been able to hook and link up stuff, you know, and so it's, it takes a lot of like effort for, so that's why it's like, you know, when should you contact search and rescue? If you're, you know, if the, like, if you know you're going to be out for the night, and you know you can make it through the night and the weather's beautiful and you're like you know what i'm gonna make it through the night I'm, I'm healthy i'm fine i'm doing well i made my shelter my fire i'm just gonna you know see this out don't call search and rescue you're okay at that point unless during the middle of the night something goes awry you know like maybe your friend starts to have problems or things just aren't going right and you're like oh this is going downhill quick you know then you can push it then another reason to call search and rescue is like if someone is hurt call them right away, you know, get that in process just because it does take so long for us to get there. It's not going to happen instantaneously. Um, we will call life flight in, but life flights only getting ca called in, you know, sometimes some search and rescue rely um, a, li a little too much on life flight and they'll call life flight right away. And life flight, um, I've, I've actually talked to a couple of people that work on life flight and they're like, please don't call us unless it's like, because it, it takes a lot of effort to get them up in the air and running and a lot of like money. Um, so they're just like, you know, unless they really, really need it because life flight, yeah, they can search the area a lot quicker and do stuff, but you know, search and rescues nowadays have drones that can hopefully find you. Um, they've got like ones with thermals on it. And so it won't go into life flight unless it is a dire situation. Um, like if you are, you know, unless we're having, that much trouble where we're like we have searched nonstop. we cannot find you on foot you know our drones have not been able to find you then we will absolutely call the life flight in and they will come out and help and sometimes they have air civil patrols in the area we have one up in helena and it's a group of people that actually will come up they're like an air force and stuff and they will come out and help so sometimes it's not going to be a life flight that will help it'll be them they'll come out and do a flyover and try to help us too so if it gets to that point where it's like, our, it's just taking too much time and we're not, you know, the weather might be turning, something might be going wrong, or you are really hurt or someone is really hurt in your party. We'll just send life flight out right away to like, try to like locate you as soon as we possibly can. Um, so that is with the SOS, but yeah, so that's the kind of what all kind of goes with your plan there with SOS is it doesn't, it's not instantaneous. It doesn't exactly go to us. Um, it, it takes a little bit of time. So that's why it's really good to have like your your kit for overnighting and it's just because something can happen and hopefully it won't happen but there's a good chance it's just life and life happens and sometimes things aren't going to go as like a coordinated plan 
Does anyone have any other questions? No? Let's see, I'm gonna go down the list here. Uh, yep, the guard on the button. Yeah, these ones, this one, it's the older style, does not have a guard. <laughs> Luckily, I've never pushed it, but it doesn't have the guard on the button. But yeah, most of them do. And But some, I don't know, one guy actually did something with the guard and it got pushed and he was like, oh crap. <laughs> But yeah, so that's why Delorm will contact you and ask you if you're okay. Someone asked what lighter you, I basically just use um, a, just a Bic lighter. I just, yep, use, I have two of these. I carry all the time with me. This one goes in this pack with the compass. And oh, I do carry with me a little right in the rain outdoor journal just because it is waterproof paper. So like, and the reason why I carry this is because sometimes I'll put like, I really like this lake and I really want to come back to it for wildflowers or something. I'll put it in there and I always just carry a pencil with it. And if something does happen, you can write in it. It's really, sometimes it's really like you just want to write in your a little journal if you're trying to get through the night and you can write like little things that you're thinking and stuff and look back on them. Um, those are really good to have with you, but those are, yeah, just, just a regular Bic lighter. Um, like I said, I carry two of those with me when I go out just because they're lightweight. And if one of them gets lost or something or gets buried in the pack, which I mean, geez, weeks later I found apples in the bottom of my pack and I'm like, okay, things get lost in there. I don't even know how. So that's why I just always, yeah, carry a couple of those things and a couple like headlamps. I always carry two of those. And that's just because someone might be with me and they might forget theirs. So then I have to, my batteries might go out. I might crush it. So, like I said, I'm always thinking worst case scenario when I go out for a day hike and what can I do to make that worst case scenario a not so worst case scenario and make it hopefully an okay scenario. Uh, should you contact and let them know you are you if you're talking about like your contacts and stuff like that. Yeah, like if you're should you. Um, so they have your, like, are you talking like search and rescue con I'm like Lori is asking spend the night. So if they have your information, if you're talking about search and rescue, no, um, you don't have to like contact them and for your information or anything like that. If, unless, I mean, your phone will ping stuff off of there as well. But if you have, like, if you're lost and like you're spending the night out and you're lost out there, you can't got like cell service. You could, you know, call in and give your like coordinates and stuff like that, but it's best to just leave it up to them to find your information. Um, hopefully you've left your information with your contacts at home and they can actually contact that person and say, did they leave anything on their fridge? Did they leave anything on their countertop when they left? And they can go into your house or if they're at your house, they can say, yeah, this is where they were heading and this is the trail that they were on and they'll have all that for you. So we can make that proper decision of trying to find you. Anything else? No. Oh, I really went over, didn't I? Well, I think that is it for my end. Um, I went over, oh, I got one more thing. These are chem lights. Um, does any of you know what a chem light is? But basically chem lights are, you know, like the old school lights that when you're a kid, you snap them and you rip them on your wrist and they like, you know, you can rave with them. That's what these are. These are the grown up versions of them, but these are like really awesome. They will last more than 12 hours and you can actually use them for signals. You can, you know, swing them around for a signal. Uh, you can use them to light your like area up. Uh, you can use them for all sorts of things. These things are awesome to have and you can buy them on Amazon online for really cheap and big buckets. Um, but that is pretty much all I carry. Oh, awesome. That was great. That yeah, was I'd like to. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you all for sitting in on that. I hope you guys learned something tonight uh, and just be safe out there and yep. go practice. It was awesome. Thank you so much, Hallie, for taking time and yeah. for sharing all your knowledge. I mean, I learned, I always feel like I learned something and love the cotton balls and the Vaseline. Like I never thought about yeah. that. It's dryer lint, but I love the idea that that's waterproof. That's genius. Yep. So, and cheap. Yeah, and it's so, so cheap. lightweight. Like I, yeah. I love stuff that's lightweight because I hate carrying more weight than I really have to. I just 
refuse to do it. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, yeah. anything I can get that's lightweight in my pack. <laughs> yeah. No, I need to do a, I need to do a shop apparently to get myself stocked up. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, we'll be sending out a link to the recording um, here shortly. Uh, yes, Cara will send out a link. So um, anybody who missed any part of it can go back and, and check it out. So awesome. Well, thanks again. And Hallie, thanks so yeah, much. Thank you guys you want so much. To, uh, yeah check out her website um she does like classes and events and stuff too so if anybody's looking for some in-person stuff um go check it out so cool have a good night you guys thanks everybody <laughs>